Good morning and welcome to The Price of Business. This is William Edmondson, turnaround CEO, consultant, and entrepreneur. And I'm filling in for Kevin Price today. As usual, we're going to talk about you and your business. Well, we've got a regular contributor, Sandra Finch of Finch CPA Firm, and we're going to talk a little bit today about a couple of topics that Sandra has prepared for us. Morning, Sandra. How are you? Good morning, William. I'm wonderful. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Nothing like uh, starting off with some uh, some exciting stuff. This This has probably been a busy time of year for you. Oh, my goodness, yes. It's been quite busy, and everyone always thinks that it's all over on April 15th for us. Oh, but no. <laughs> of course not, because we have the Texas franchise tax, which is due May 15th. So we barely get a breather before we have to jump up and start working on all of these franchise taxes. <laughs> I know. For for those who aren't familiar with it, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about the, the franchise tax and, and what that is, and then let's talk a little bit about it. Okay, the franchise tax, there's one in every state, and generally, in most states, it's an income tax. It's based on the net income of the business, just mm-hmm. like a federal tax is. But in Texas, they really changed everything up about seven years ago, and they made it a margins tax. Uh, and and what it's, who it, uh, it applies to is every business that there is, except for sole proprietorships. And that's another thing they changed not very long ago. It used to be exempt for certain types of partnerships and other companies, but now it applies to every company, even those little LLCs that everybody likes to form, uh, and they're disregarded for federal purposes, well, they have to file a franchise tax return. And, mm. and people think franchise means McDonald's. Right. No, I don't have a franchise. I shouldn't have to file a franchise tax return. But it actually, the word just means the right to do business. Right. And a lot of people don't understand that. But sure enough, the government is equal uh, opportunity in that way. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, t- tell us, there are, there are a couple of different rates. I think there's a 7.5 and a 3.75. Well, actually, it's, um, it's yes, it's 0.75 or 0.375. Right. Um, so it, and that's really good. It went down. Uh, it was one percent and a half a percent, wow. and it's gone down a little bit, a little bit. This year, it went down pretty drastically to point seven five and point three seven five of your gross margins, and uh, that's a longer conversation than we can have here. But <laughs> suffice it to say that it's it's generally around seventy percent of your gross income. And that is the tricky, tricky thing about doing business in Texas. You can actually have a loss on your company. You can have a net loss and still pay franchise tax in Texas because they don't care what the rest of your expenses are. They only care what your cost of goods sold was or your payroll or 30% of your gross. So no matter what, you're going to pay taxes I call it the overhead tax because what they don't let you deduct is all of your overhead. Well, you know, overhead's kind of an important part of the business, but that that doesn't come into their formula. No, it doesn't. And I don't know that there's another animal like this in the, any of the other 49 states. Wow. We are the lucky ones in Texas to get to pay the tax like this. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, anything else we need to know about the uh, franchise tax? Well, just that, having said all that, your first $1.11 million is tax-exempt. So if your company isn't grossing over a million dollars yet, then you don't have to worry about any of this, except that you do have to file the return, and you have to file it by May 15th or extend it until November, and you do have to file a public information report And, William, this is the one thing I want to let people know. When you file that report, it is public information. It goes to Wikicorp. It goes everywhere. People can see it anytime they want to. So what I like to tell officers and directors of their their businesses to do is to put their business address, not their home address, on that public information report. Oh, yeah. Because you don't really need that information out there. No, you you don't need any publicity like that. No, <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> well, 
Well, that's great. Now, now you've got another topic that's really timely. Uh, I know Kevin's been having some some issues with the with the high water that we had, and and just all of this flooding we've seen around around the Houston area. Uh, a lot of people have seen it on the news if they're not in Houston. But uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, flood victims' reprieve with the IRS. Yeah, this just came out, and. Well, to start off with, most people don't know that April 15th is now a tax debt tax. Um, it's a holiday. Mm-hmm. Because it's a holiday in Washington, D.C., your tax returns aren't really due April 15th. They were due April 18th. Right. Well, that's the day we had the flood. So the IRS has said that Houston and all of the surrounding area that's been considered a federal disaster area uh, has until September 1st to file their tax returns that were due April 15th or 18th, however you want to put it. Yeah. That's nice. Most of us had already taken care of it. Right. But two amazing things are also involved in this. One is that they are actually giving you that extension to pay, not just to file, but to pay until September 1st. Oh, wow. That never happens. Um, and the second thing is that a lot of people have estimated estimated tax payments that they pay on April 15th, June 15th. Well, those um, payments are going to be considered not late as long as you make those by September 1st. So you get a reprieve on last year's tax. You get a reprieve on this year's estimated tax if you're the kind of person that pays estimated tax payments. Wow, that that is a little bit of good news uh, inside of all the other news, right? It sure is. Well, well, we'll take any good news we can get. And I, I know that uh, a lot of the people who really have just been in, in a bad way with the, with the repeated flooding, I mean, th- this, this at least gives them a, a little bit of a break. Yeah, and it's a long period of time. And again, uh, they're saying that it is also an extension to pay. So if people have flood damages or they need to pay attention to other needs for their cash flow right now, they can do that safely and worry about the IRS later. Well, that's good. I, I worry about the IRS all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if you can, if you can have that, that's nice. Well, we've, we've got uh, about a minute and a half left. Um, something I, I always like to point out is that uh, kind of adds to a point you made earlier, and that is April 15th or April 18th, that's not the only time you need to be worried about your finances and planning. Why don't you tell everybody when the right time to call you is? Oh, goodness. Just as soon as after April, uh, I'm sorry, May 15th as you can. Um, But definitely no later than, say, July 31st. Mm -hmm. These next couple of months, these are the critical months where we get to see how are you doing, especially in your business, but not just in business. If you have an individual that's got several different ways that they make income, we really focus on planning. We love to help you design your own tax return. There are so many ways you can change what that's going to look like come next April 15th. And if you know all of the cards and all of the pieces of the puzzle, then uh, it's, it's a fun thing to do. It doesn't have to be an onerous, scary task. And if you know your taxes are going to be a certain amount because you're having a great bang-up year, well, it's a lot easier to do that over eight months or seven months than it is to try and come up with all of it in December or, God forbid, next March or April. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, it's, it's so important to plan. It gives you peace of mind, and then it, it's not this big rush with the uh, shoebox to your office. Exactly. Because well, we, don't, we don't really do it that way. We like to have people come in calm, cool, and they're on their way to the lake when they drop their stuff off to sure. us because they know what their tax return is going to say. Sandra, real quickly, give us your website, and then we've got to run. Okay. It is Finch, F is in Frank, I-N-C-H, C-P-A firm dot com. Great. Thank you. We'll be back with more Price of Business after this. 